Hey everyone, we're doing a new series on snake myths. Everywhere we go, every job we go to, people have got questions, people have got old wives tales and snake myths that they tell us. We're here to talk about them and tell you why they're not true. All right, volume one, let's do it. All righty, thanks for joining us everybody. We've got a huge list, uh, as you can see, of snake myths to go through. now. Every day on our job, we go to people's homes and they ask us questions, they bring up snake mist, they bring up old wives' tales, uh, majority of which are not true. The first thing I'll say is that if someone who's not a snake catcher or a herpetologist or a reptile uh, expert and they tell you something or a neighbor tells you something about snakes, it's usually not true. <laughs> but we're gonna go through some stuff here and we'll go through a few of the major ones first. Snakes are very aggressive and will chase you. Now this is one of the biggest ones that we get every single day. It's certainly a myth. Snakes are not aggressive. We prefer to call them defensive. And the reason we say that is because they're not the aggressor. They're not out here to try and catch us or kill us or bite us every day. They're not chasing your kids or your pets. What they're doing is looking for food, which usually has nothing to do with us. But if you go up to them, if you intimidate them, if they feel threatened or they feel in danger, that's when they will defend themselves. So they're not aggressive, but they can get defensive if humans or pets put them in a situation which they don't like. Snakes drown when they're in water. Snakes drown when they're in water, simply not true. What you've got to understand is snakes can actually hold their breath for a significant amount of time, potentially 10 to 20 minutes in some species. Uh, majority of snakes can actually swim as well, and they'll use that swimming ability to swim across a pool, swim across a river system, swim across a dam, you know, looking for food or shelter. So that is definitely a myth, they will not drown, um, unless of course they're trapped in a water body for days and days and days where they can't get out. But as snakes can, uh, they can be very good at swimming. Venomous snakes can't climb. Venomous snakes don't climb is one of the uh, most common myths that we get as well. Essentially, it's completely false. Um, just because a snake is off the ground or on top of a fence or in a roof doesn't mean it's not venomous. Now, a couple of uh, examples, we've seen eastern brown snakes up in guttering, we've seen red bellies and browns on top of fences. Um, I've seen whip snakes above door frames. Uh, one of the best climbers in the business, the brown tree snake, is probably the most common snake along with carpet pythons that can be found in your roof and the brown uh, tree snake is also venomous. So guys, do not believe that. Venomous snakes certainly can climb. If you look into a snake's eyes, it will remember you. <laughs> I remember when we uh, got told this myth and I've been, uh, I've been told it a couple of times since. So. It's simply not the case. If a snake is staring you down, one, you're probably too close and you probably need to back off, but it's not gonna stare you down. It's not gonna stare into your soul and remember who you are and come back for you in the night or come back for you a week later. It's simply not true. Snakes, they wanna get away from us. If a snake's staring at you, it's probably petrified of you and uh, looking for its first opportunity to get away. So don't worry about that, guys. They're not gonna stare you down. They're not gonna stare into your soul and they won't remember you. Snakes like to drink milk. Now I must add into this, uh, we had another one come in that snakes like to drink breast milk, which is a little bit creepy, but my understanding is snakes don't drink milk. Um, I think that's a bit of a myth. I'm not sure where that's come from, where the whole breast milk thing has come from. Uh, it's all a bit strange, but uh, yeah, definitely a myth. Placing small rocks and pebbles around your house will deter snakes to slither over them. This is a very interesting one. We get this quite a lot where people think that if they put either stones, pebbles, sharp objects around, I guess, the perimeter of their house or around kind of the pathway is that snakes simply just won't cross it and won't come in your yard. It's certainly not true. The way you got to think about it is a snake in the wild goes over all, you know, all kinds of substrates, whether that's timber, pebbles, hard ground, hot ground sometimes. Um, so it's certainly not true. Snakes will essentially travel over any objects. Um, I've seen them slither along very, very spiky plants uh, with ease. So that is certainly a myth. Blue tongue lizards are good for keeping snakes away. The old bluey myth, uh, this comes up quite regularly as well. Uh, essentially it is a myth. If you have blue tongues in your yard, you certainly can have snakes and vice versa. If you have snakes in your yard, you can have blueys. Uh, they can, I guess, eat each other, more so the snakes eating the blue tongues. I'm sure a bluey might have a crack at a very, very small snake, but yeah, that is definitely a myth. They can, ha they can live in the same area. If you see a baby snake, assume the mother snake is watching you nearby. We get this question all the time around spring season and mating season. You know, if you have a baby snake in your yard, does that mean that the mother snake is literally staring you down, watching your every move? 
it's certainly not true. So there's no parental care in snakes. Um, the only sort of form of parental care is maybe a carpet python mother sitting on the eggs. But once the snakes hatch out or once the uh, live bearers are born, they'll uh, basically go off in all different directions by themselves and fend for themselves. So yeah, there's, there's no parental care. If you've got a baby snake around, most likely the mother's already long gone and moved on. Um, there may be other babies, That's a, I'll add that to that myth. Um, there can be other baby snakes, especially if uh, the clutch of eggs is sort of hatched nearby. Uh, that does happen from time to time where someone gets a baby snake and then the next day they get another baby snake. But uh, majority of the time, yeah, it's just the one snake. This is similar to a few of the other ones we've already talked about, but uh, Eastern Browns keep other snakes away. Eastern Browns keep other snakes away is not true at all. Um, it's one of those things where we hear about snakes being territorial and defending a, a zone and keeping it their own and if you've got a you know, red belly black snake you're never going to have brown snakes or if you have a brown snake you're never going to have red bellies or pythons or if you have a python you're never going to have anything. It's just they're all not true. Um, we've had situations where we've caught a brown snake and a red belly in the same backyard. They can occupy the same area. Certain snakes depending on their size can eat each other but um, it's certainly not a situation where one snake is defending that zone and keeping all other snakes away. So that is definitely a myth. Peppermint oil keeps snakes away. The peppermint oil keeps snakes away myth, I'm gonna to add to essentially any substance, any concoction that people have come up with that they reckon they can put in a bottle, shake it up, spray it around their house and it keeps snakes away. It's all not true. Uh, the uh, concoctions, especially in the peppermint, you can't just line your property with peppermint oil um, and it'll keep you know, snakes away, it doesn't work like that. There's currently nothing on the market, no substance or chemical or whatever that will deter snakes from your yard. Snakes don't want to bite us. This is probably more a question rather than a myth. Now, snakes don't want to bite us, that is true. Um, it is a myth, they don't really want to bite humans, but I tell you what, they will bite you if you mess with them. So it all comes down to the situation. If you leave a snake alone, they certainly don't want to bite you. They've got, you know, we, we give them nothing, you know, they can't really eat us, so there's no point in biting us. The only reason they would bite a human is if they're defending themselves or if they're scared. So yeah, I guess that is a little bit of a myth, but at the same time, if you get too close to a snake, you don't give it the respect it deserves, they will certainly defend themselves and bite you. Oh, okay. If you are bitten by a snake, the same snake will bite you again in 12 months time. <laughs> uh, this is not true guys. Snakes don't really have that good a memory. If, they, if you get bitten by a snake, um, which is obviously unfortunate, we don't want that to happen, you don't have to be concerned that in 12 months time, to the day, it's like the full moon rises and the snake's gonna come after you again. It's simply not true. Stomping on the ground will scare the snakes away. This is a bit of a funny one, uh, and the reason I think it's funny is because we get often asked, it's more of a question rather than a myth, it's just like, okay, if I walk around my yard to keep myself safe, do I have to basically go around stomping like an elephant in my yard? The answer is no. You don't have to do that. One, you look silly to your neighbours, and two, yes, snakes can feel vibrations, but they'd feel the vibrations of you walking. You don't have to be st stomping like an elephant to uh, scare the snakes off. And they're very movement or their eyesight's very movement orientated as well, so they will see you coming, and um, especially if you're moving around them. So yeah, don't go stomping around your yard like a uh, silly person. Uh, you just look like a creep or a bit of a strange person to your neighbours. I've just uh, stopped laughing about this one for the last 30 seconds. This one's ridiculous, but we're going to read it out anyway because we're here to have a bit of fun as well as be serious. red belly black snakes are only red on their bellies from past victims' blood. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where to go with that. Um, it's definitely not true. Uh, naturally, a red belly black snake has a red belly and a black top. They don't go around killing things and then wiping themselves through the uh, victim's blood and that's how they get their red belly. It's simply not true. That's, uh, that's one of the most strange things I've ever heard. Having a pet like a cat or dog in your backyard or in your home will repel snakes away from your house. We get asked this question all the time. If we have a cat or a dog in our backyard, does that simply keep snakes away? The answer is no. Um, we catch snakes in people's yards with pets every single day. In fact, probably five or 10 times a day, uh, we go out to jobs where people have a dog or a cat or whatever in their yard and um, a snake comes in. Don't get me wrong, a snake probably doesn't want to go near your pets. Um, most of the time, a snake wants to steer clear of pets and us, but having a uh, dog or a cat in your yard simply doesn't keep snakes away. Naughty snakes make good money using only fangs. Huh. 
<laughs> I have a feeling this one's a bit of a stitch up by my media managers, but uh, I don't know if snakes, I don't know what they get involved in in their spare time, but I'm sure it's nothing to do with only fangs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey guys, thanks for watching. Just remember though, only half of you who watch our videos have subscribed. So click the link below, click on the button, subscribe to our YouTube, and let us know if you want more cool content like this. But thank you so much for watching.